You know what? You wanted to see a trailer video? Fine. Here it is. There. There's the trailer. Right there. Is that, is that good enough? So, I'll start up here at the very front. Obviously, standard inch and seven eighths coupler setup. Uh, one thing I have done here for my trailer lock, I did set up a little tether, which is, I think, very handy. I've lost about three of these locks so far, uh, leaving them up here in my bumper, and then I forget and drive off with it. So this will just keep it attached to the trailer. Uh, just a little loop I made with some braid, and you can see I kind of wrapped some wire around up here to make a to make kind of a, a fastening point on the lock. Uh, moving back, um, this trailer originally had a very, very short tongue. Like the tongue, I think, and the coupler started like right there. And, and frankly, that was so miserable to try to back up. Unbelievably difficult. This thing just jackknife in a heartbeat. And so uh, I needed to make the tongue longer and I can't weld. So uh, this seemed to be the easiest solution. It's a bolt-on uh, swinging hinge. Uh, you can pull this hitch pin right here and then that allows the trailer tongue to swing out. And that makes it much more, um, you know, uh, compact if you need to store it in a garage uh, where that's a problem. But the other thing it did is by putting this extra piece up here, um, this is a piece I bought from Amazon, I was able to go ahead and, um, you know, make this like a much more usable um, trailer for backing. Um, this makes it ideal, really. I started off with about a four foot piece up here, which is the maximum length they recommend. Um, I cut it down to about 36 inches. Um, I found that the four inch long piece made this thing too unmaneuverable. So this, this uh, 36 inch piece right here seemed to be about the happy medium. And this is a good solid connection um, for, for a trailer that's, that's pulling as light as what it, what it is. Um, added a uh, swing away jack wheel. Uh, makes it extremely easy to roll the trailer around uh, on smooth pavement. Um, spare tire, do not skimp on this guys. Get the spare tire. Uh, holder. Um, I removed the metal that was originally in here and put wood in place so that I could make it a little bit more easily mountable surface. Um, and then you can see up here, and I've got another video about this that I'm going to do, but this is basically like a cradle system that I built. Um, these are decking boards here uh, up on top is like a Trex decking board that I used. And you can see I've got a very mild V shape in it, which helps to hug the hole for the bottom of the boat. Um, Probably what you're most interested though is how I set up the racks. Um, this is a van rack system right here um, that is used for like, you know, vans that are transporting conduit or PVC pipe. Um, I'm gonna put the link to everything that I use for this in, in the description so you can find it there. Uh, but this is PVC, or this is, uh, this is good heavy quality steel um, and uh, it's powder coated. Uh, it's, it's not the greatest quality, but it's definitely good enough for this. And it's certainly strong enough for a kayak. I think this is rated at like 250 pounds. Um, you'll kind of see how this works, like I say, in, in the other video up here, but this just makes it a little bit smoother loading system. Um, I'm really liking the Trek so far for, for the kayak cushion, or uh, for this, this kayak cradle system I've got here. And then these upper bars, uh, this is a small truck rack. So it's designed for like your, your small, uh, kind of older pickups now. Um, as you can see, this trailer is only about 45 inches wide, so I, I needed something that wasn't going to be uh, too wide. And um, the one thing I will say about this setup here is you're going to be pretty limited in terms of the width of the boats that you can put in. I, I think you're limited to about 32 or 33 inches. My Kilroy is fine for that, um, but if you're talking any boats any wider than that, uh, you're probably going to have to swap out to a different set of bars. Um, you could, uh, wh what I probably am going to do in the future is I'm going to do a Malone um, a rack system that's designed to fit on these utility trailers. That's a much more uh, straight up vertical and it doesn't have this, it doesn't have this cut in right here. Um, and uh, that way it'll accommodate a, a wider kayak, uh, which probably in the future I plan on getting. Um, you can see here on the attachment, and, and this is really basic stuff here, guys. Um, and this is just, I just bolted straight through the steel. And, you know, um, I used, I believe, 5 16ths for these. You can see down here, I mean, these are just simple, 
they're just simple bolts that I put through there uh, and then use locking nuts on the back end and and these things are incredibly sturdy um, you know this is not super stick super thick steel but I've had no issues with this coming loose or having any wobble uh, you can see right here I did the same thing with these uh, technically these truck racks are, are sub supposed to be a bolt free installation I did drill through them um, and, and put bolts in uh, for this application because this is um, kind of unique and it, it's you know there really wasn't like a clampable surface on here because this is so this is so thin it's not like a, a truck truck bed rail um, you can also see here, uh, I've put a couple of eyelets. Uh, these are really handy for just attaching various things. I've got one here, one at the back, and then one up here at the front. Um, the, uh, the eyelets are great for running um, your, your cam straps or, or ratchet straps, whatever you need, bungees. You can run that up over the top, so it's just a great attachment point. Um, you can also use this for uh, a good security point um, so that you can make this uh, lockable. Uh, by running like a steel security cable around your kayak. Uh, moving around here to the back and the modifications that I did, um, this used to have a uh, like a, a solid piece of metal similar to this that, that fit within these grooves on this side. And that, those things rattled like crazy. It was just absolutely miserable, especially when you're driving this thing at night. I mean, it made so much noise. Uh, so I went ahead and replaced that with uh, two by sixes. Um, it's an inch and a half inside that groove pretty much perfectly. So a two by six, like, slots in there very nicely um, and then I just made a little tailgate system uh, that that swings open uh, and I just have it secured with a little cotter pin there um, that allows you to load and unload um, while you still have your kayak in place which is really good for storing life vests paddles um, you know coolers you can slide up underneath here and still keep your kayak in, in place where it needs to be um, you can also see here, and again, I'm going to detail this in another video and kind of a, about this kind of load assist system I did in the back. Um, but uh, this is all self-fabricated. These are rollers that you use for a uh, larger boat trailer. Um, works really well uh, for loading the kayak and allowing it to just kind of roll in place up instead of having to, you know, just sit there and lift and try to push. Um, and uh, it, it allows basically it allows you to to use this uh i think you know much more easily without having to do as much brute force um, i'm oftentimes fishing by myself i need to be able to load and unload my kayak um, without help and so this this allows me to do that much easier um, and like i say, i'll go over that in more detail later uh, in a different video um, that is pretty much it for the trailer. As you can see on this side over here, I've got a lock and I usually run a security cable up and through uh, the, the uh, handles of the boat that allow me to lock this in place. Um, the one other thing I'll show you here too that I've done to really modify this trailer. And I, I mean, this is something again, I really recommend you guys not skimping on. Um, invest in some better tires. Uh, these tires are um, radials. Um, they're a little bit beefier than the ones that came with it. Uh, you can see the original tire I had over here as a, as a spare. Uh, this is just a bias ply tire. They're not nearly as durable. They ride much rougher. Like I, I, at this point, I just wouldn't trust that driving long distances or going over rough roads. Um, I, I got these from e-trailer uh, right here, and I, I think they've made a world of difference. They, they gave it a little more ground clearance. Um, uh, I also like the looks of them a lot better, but this is just a much better tire. It's helped out uh, the ride considerably, not nearly as bouncy, and, and I have a lot more faith in these, um, you know, not going flat on me when, when you're out in a bad spot, which a lot of times when you're kayak fishing, you're, you're off in a bad spot. That is pretty much it uh, in terms of the modifications I did to the trailer. I, I want to go back to the, the top racks for a second and explain why I put them on, even though it does kind of limit what I, I can do with, with loading boats right now. Uh, the big thing about this for me is that it just allows for more versatility. Um, I've got a Thule um, roof cargo box and uh, I can mount that on this with no problem. Uh, so that allows you to put like a lockable storage area up here if you need to. Um, I've also had two kayaks up here um, and as you can see loading a kayak up here I mean this is much closer to your body's center of gravity. You're not having to reach up over your head like you do with overhead truck racks. So it makes kayaks a lot easier to load up here. Uh, if you get J-hooks, you can load two kayaks side by side. Um, so this gives you the capacity in the same trailer to haul camping gear, coolers, paddles, all kinds of stuff. 
load two kayaks, smaller kayaks up here. Um, if you had a larger kayak um, that you needed to have more width on, um, you can load that um, up here as well, especially if you get like some cradles for it. Uh, so it allows for a ton of versatility, um, you know, in how you use this trailer. And, and that was the big thing to me. Initially, when I bought this trailer, I had a smaller vehicle to pull it with, and, and you know, it wasn't really a very good option for me trying to car top like, you know, I had at the time a Jackson Big Tuna, and, and that was just not going to work, uh, car topping that. That's, that's a miserable experience. So um, this allowed me, number one, to load and unload a lot easier. Then uh, as, as I got a family and got other people involved that, you know, uh, you know, started going camping with the kayak and stuff like that, I realized pretty quickly I needed more space. Um, so the versatility of this trailer for the amount of money that I've got into it, uh, I think these racks down here were approximately 100. I think these were about 150. Um, you know, my little cradle system I, I built here was, you know, I, I think it was maybe about 50 bucks uh, all told. Um, you know, the tires and wheels down there, 150. Uh, these are, uh, this was I think like 70 bucks for the swing away and I think 20 for the steel. I painted it myself with just, just spray paint. Um, you know, you look at how much I've got in it and the versatility that I can get out of this trailer. This is something you're getting out of more like about a two or $3,000 trailer. Um, if you look at companies like Malone or um, Yakima that make these kind of specialized kayak trailers, um, by the time you get the capacity to add some cargo, and add multiple kayaks, um, man, you start getting north of, you know, $1,500, $2,000 very, very quickly. And, and it, it won't haul as much stuff as this. Um, this trailer started off as a Lowe's carry-on trailer. Um, you know, they're made in the USA. I think at the time I bought this, is about $330. Uh, since then, I think they've gone up in price now, and I think they're like around $450. I'll, I'll have that information in there. But you can see I use that to modify this, and, and it's it's not aluminum. Um, it is a heavier duty steel trailer that I think is rated around, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of towing capacity. So, you know, that that's a that's a really beefy trailer. But it was still light enough I could move it around by hand and then pull it with my little Subaru that I had before. Um, you know, the weight is not as much of a concern now that I've got a truck. But you know, the fact is is that you know you can take this and make this a very very easy. Uh, solo kayak trailer where you can haul camping gear um, you can haul it behind almost any vehicle that that will accept a trailer hitch um, you know I was towing it with a hybrid and it still worked just fine um, you know it's really hard to find anything out there and particularly this is I started this back probably five or six years ago there weren't as many trailer options out there as there are now and I just think for the money, man, you can do a lot with this trailer, a lot with it, and it works really well. It's still fairly low to the ground. It's easy to load, um, you know, it, it just, you know, just bang for buck wise and being able to kind of spend a little bit of money, then you can upgrade it a little bit more, spend a little bit more money, you can upgrade it a little bit more until you get it pretty much lined out. And, and you know, this thing, I'm not going to have to upgrade it much if I want to add a bigger kayak. Um, you know, I, if I you know, want to do other things with it, I can. It's just, you know, it's a very versatile platform and it's cheap. And, you know, being cheap and versatile, that's, that's the kayaking way, especially the kayaking DIY way. I think your trailer's sexy. It really turns me on. Okay. I'm always right. staring at you. Okay. When you when you get your fish on. <laughs> okay. When you get fish on. Like uh, that. Yeah, that's great, baby. That's that's great. <laughs>